Hello there, I'm Narabax. Welcome to uh, Aston Martin, F1 Manager 2022. We're going to be testing out the 1.8 patch with uh, Aston Martin here. They uh, skipped 1.7, went straight to 1.8. And in general, in that patch, the uh, big thing they changed was how tyre degradation works on performance, uh, back market behaviour, uh, some design changes, which I, so far, believe to be purely on the AI side. And they did some changes to fuel and fuel delta, so we'll have to see how all that plays out. But in general, what we're interested in is generally the changes to the sign and, of course, the tyres. Now, with Aston Martin, we're expected to, uh, you know, finish 8th. And long term, we're expected to be a uh, points contender. In terms of our current team, we have the ninth uh, best car, the 7th best drivers, the shittiest staff, and uh, fairly decent headquarters in... Uh, in fifth. Our employees or our drivers are Vettel and Stroll. Stroll is probably going to get changed out for, I believe, Alonso, probably. Fairly, uh, fairly early on. Making us have a, well, an old guard kind of save, which could be fun. Hulkenberg, I don't know if we're going to change him out this season. The first one or the next, we'll have to see. But uh, we'll also have to see on the stats of our team here if we want to switch them out early also. Judging by, uh, well... The fact that we're ranked 10 in stop quality. Biography here. The Aston Martin team is fairly new. I believe they've only been here for five seasons. So uh, as we'll have to see if we can make something out of it. Let's get into the game. Here we are. We're back in the game. And we're straight away going to start making some uh, some moves here. So we start with a lot of money as Aston. 31 point, uh, basically 8 million. And the first thing we're going to do is what you should always do first. Basically upgrade your design center. The more designs you can run, the better for you. So let's get that upgraded. 11.5 million. I have no problems putting that money down. And the second thing we're going to do is start developing our car. We want to try and get our car to be the best as soon as possible. And of course, that might be a bit of a challenge, but I think we'll uh, I think we'll make it work here. The first thing we're going to do is what we usually do, the underfloor. And as you can see here, we actually have... Uh, Compared to the current fit on the floor, four and a well four percent expertise boost already, so that is good to see. I mean that we should get a good one, and I'm thinking that we will just put in everything we have here into this uh, into this underfloor. I don't know if we're gonna make another one this season. We probably will just to boost expertise, but for now we are gonna be doing this. It's probably gonna stick with us for a long time, but as you can see here, even. Even if we put everything to maximum, the negatives do not amount for to a lot, really. It's 0 0.6 times 3, 1.8, plus 0 0.9, which means uh, minus 2.7. So we still have a 3% net gain there. We have, a, well, again, 3% net gain here, and 3% here, 3% here. Sorry, we have actually less here, but uh, it's still a gain. Don't get me wrong. So I think the strategy is still just maximize everything. If you have attributes you do not particularly need for your car, it's okay to forgo them to boost the others. But as a general rule, it seems like every slider to the right, the focus is still worth it. They might have nerfed it a little bit. I'm actually a bit, a little bit uncertain here because I don't see too many changes. In terms of time, it's about the same. Well, actually, it should be exactly the same. So... I don't know what they've done here, but I have a feeling they may be, because if I read the patch notes here, further adjustments to car part development focus and attribute trade-ups to help balance player progress progress versus the other teams. So it might sound good, but due to seeing very few changes here, what I'm expecting here to actually have happened is that the AI can now use focuses. So for those of you who don't know, in the previous patch, the AI, when they developed the car, would keep every focus in the middle, they would never focus anything. But if they're now allowed to use focuses, we can expect to see them progress faster and thus be, you know, a threat in line with the with the player. They'll be just as quick. And, uh, well, potentially that could be a problem, but it could also be good for us. So we're going to go intense design, all sliders right on the floor. And the second piece I'm thinking we do here is probably the front wing. We're lacking a lot of turning. Of course, rear wing would be nice. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think front wing is probably best. We could also try and focus on these smaller pieces just in the beginning here. Because they are, again, 
that just balance piece so you get virtually out of the out of the cooker they'll not be very good but our goal this season isn't to win our goal this season is to create a car that gives us a fighting chance next season so what i'm thinking is we go for the front wing everything right except cooling and it's come to my attention that cooling might not be as useful as i, as I thought but from my experience playing this game your cooling stat doesn't matter too much remember during our williams run there is nothing on cooling as far as i can see in the patch notes if there is i have missed it and i apologize probably there's nothing there so cooling might help with lockups help with accidents to some degree but i don't think it has that much of an effect it's the same thing with smoothness um in the williams run now in 1.8 we did over a 40 60 percent usage stint basically bring the tower down from 100% to 40%. The difference in stats between Piastri and Pocher in that save amounted to basically two extra laps that Piastri would easily make up just to being having better pace stats. So smoothness is one thing that is kind of useless. It's nice to have, don't get me wrong, but it's so little value that I feel it's better to just not invest into it, invest into other parts. And that's basically the same here with the car. We don't want to invest in smoothness. We want to invest in the pace stats. And that is my, well, philosophy here. If it works or not, we'll have to see. But that is basically how I'm thinking if you uh, if you want to, you know, know my reasoning. So we're going to pay some money here. And we still have actually a decent amount left. So both of these will take a couple of months to finish. And in terms of the facility, well, in terms of getting uh, the design center here upgraded, that's going to take even longer, as you can see. But what I'm thinking is that we go ahead and switch out probably Hulk Hulkenberg. Get a talent in that we can improve later on. And it's going to cost us 4.3 million. I feel like it's worth it to be able to raise a talent right now. Because if we do pick up a loan, so we pick a battle. We have no idea when either of them might decide to retire. They are both uh, old drivers. Some of the oldest, I believe. Uh, Hulkenberg, too, for that matter. But yeah, it's uh, top five oldest drivers alongside uh, Hamilton, Kubica, and, uh, well, Paris, too. So what I'm thinking is we do try and poach Alonso. We're just going to do standard scouting. And we're probably also going to do something about our, well, other things, the staff. But I think we will switch out Hulkenberg. We'll probably push Cher. Push is just that good of a talent. And honestly, if you look look here, Hauger is one that is getting close to him. So we could potentially test him out just for do something different this season, which actually we might do. Test out Hauger, get something uh, a little bit different going. Boucher is a great talent. You would be very happy to have him, don't get me wrong. Duan is also great, and Piastri is also great. But again, these are drivers we know. So I'm thinking we might just do that. We might just pick up Hauger here instead and we'll give him an opportunity to be reserved we'll see how that goes and basically we'll try and do something a little bit different for uh, well for fun really so we're gonna pay a decent amount of money for this don't get me wrong but uh currently we are in a position where we can do this oh we did not like the length of the contract but he will accept it so it'll cost us as you can see 4.3 million for hulkenberg 400,000 for his current contract and a 50,000 starting bonus so we are gonna we're gonna hire him i feel like it's an okay deal with that we made our first move now we are gonna try and figure out what currently alonso is being paid that's why i'm doing the standard scouting we will not be able to sign him for bahrain that's just how things are it will not happen and uh, other than that do we have anything else we need to go through before we get to the first race probably our staff our technical chief and header aerodynamics are both bad. And our technical chief only has one year left on his contract. But the aerodynamics chief here has a lot more. It's still going to cost us money to break said contract. But what we do is either we break them now. Or we wait. The race engineers are both decent. So we're going to keep them. They're actually pretty good, all things considered. But uh, if we scout for a technical chief here. You can see here in terms of overall rating. We can get Cyril here. Cyril Clement. I think I've seen this guy before. Um, 
78 though, he's just five below. And he's young, so he can potentially stay for a while. I think we're gonna... Uh... Honestly, I don't know what he would like as a contract, but let's see if we can uh, make something work here. Five, con five seasons. Our current... The uh, man here is probably paid, I don't know, 2 million maybe? I don't think that will be enough, but we can always try. We'll also give him a decent starting bonus. Let's see how he feels about this one. Very high patience, so we can do a couple of testing, testing the woods here. Not high enough. Okay, we're going to try and give you 2.5. Okay, 2.6. Let's see how we feel about this. Okay, so I made up overpaid here for him, but we'll get him here. And we can live with that. It's uh, something I should have done that I should have picked him up, though, before deciding the pass. So that's on me. Uh, it's a bad habit of mine. He sucks at suspension, which is actually perfectly fine. We want him to have high front wing, rear wing, and underfloor. So this is actually not, these are actually not the worst stats he could have had, all things considered. And we are probably going to end up making more underfloors. But yeah, I should have hired, hired him before making the underfloor. And I should have done the same for the head of aerodynamics. Now, the free agent is 76. Um, but I'm thinking we wait a bit here. And we try and snatch one that is higher leveled. Potentially. Because we have four years on the current contract. It's going to be more expensive to breach. And, uh, well, we are spending a lot of money. So... But still, the, the stats aren't good. Um, I see. What aerodynamics chief is willing to get to us? Dr. Bear? We could actually pick him up again. And honestly, I think we just do. It's uh, it's a good it's a good move, really. Let's uh, see if we can poach him. Which is going to be probably very expensive. Uh, let's go for 2.8, maybe. 200,000 signing. Five seasons. And again, we can switch out these guys later on, but for now it's perfectly okay to just uh, do it like this, I feel. And hopefully we can afford him. Oh, he was not happy with the money. Let's try 3.2 maybe. Oh, he was getting there. 3.4. We'll probably have two, three more tries maybe. There we are. And it'll cost us basically all of our money to do this. So, uh, Alonso will have to wait a little bit. But I'm thinking upgrading these, doing these upgrades when we have this amount of money is potentially a good thing. But again, and we aren't looking to compete this season. Switching out our... You know what? We're going to cancel this. It's just too much money. We're going to try and see if we can get someone else at the start of next season. And uh, it might be Dirk the Bear. But we're not looking to compete this season. And I kind of forget that. I'm a little bit still in William's mindset. Apologies for that. But I think we're set now. The technical chief here should be okay. Hopefully we can uh, make him grow 1,500 points. And... Uh, well, I might need to get the team hub up and running. But for now, we'll try and set up some money so we can get the design team, design building up and running more efficiently. And we have here, welcome to the team. Good. Let's continue then. See where we stand. Car development, uh, welcoming Cyril, welcoming Hauger. Very good. Obligations, though. I forgot about this. Okay, so this sucks quite a bit. Not the greatest here. I believe these are random, actually. So, we didn't roll good here on the dice. Race day factory event. Didn't roll good on the dice here either, really. Every race. Uh, battle. Medium appearances. Guess this is a decent roll. Battle already has low, so it won't grow too much. But both drivers, that's going to be a bit annoying. Especially control performance rating. We'll have to see what we do about that, but we can't really do anything. We'll just have to live with it. We'll approve of the party request, and then we'll continue to, uh, well, start of uh, the season, if you will. And as you can see, our car is pretty bad. 15th is the highest we could get in uh, low-speed cornering, but other than that, our car is backmarker worthy. Let's just say it like that. 
Alonso scouting complete. Um, pretty decent stats. I'm very happy that Smoothness is among his lowest. Adaptability is the lowest. But uh, did we get his contract? No. Okay, we'll have to do a detailed scouting then. I was I was expecting the standard scouting to give like contract information and then detail to figure out his stats. I didn't know it was that way around. <laughs> That's a bit funny to me. Now I'm a bit unsure if we want to include races here for this series, well first season, because we're basically gonna be back markers, at least for the first half of the season. Uh but we'll consider that as we go. We'll not guarantee any of these because we can't. We need to reliably finish above 15th if we want to do that. So uh, with that said, let's go to Bahrain here and see how the first season goes. Again, I'll probably have the, both versions up in time here, probably either late tonight or tomorrow. But uh, I'll try and get both parts up and then you can see how we do as back markers. I'll be, uh, I'll be back after the race. I've decided to add just for fun here the first qualifying, which we'll have a quick look at here how we're going to do. So we're doing one flying lap, we're doing it on the softs, and well, since we're expecting to go out in Q3, we're going to be doing, uh, well, our own little thing here, so... Ready, check. That's what we usually do, we send a okay, driver out early, both of them, okay, it's green now. and we try and get one lap out quick, and we'll also use this as an opportunity to see back market behavior potentially, signs to note here, and shoe market will be in the way. Pretty sure Schumacher there slowed down Vettel quite a bit, so we end up having traffic. Uh, Stroll here is quite a long, a lot behind uh, Vettel. Schumacher is also low, low, slow. Sorry. And we're going to reconfigure for one more run, and we're going to do that run at the end before, well, at the end of the uh, the train, if you will. So Alban is behind us. Schumacher had a pretty poor run. But in general here we uh, we're not too focused on the first run it isn't that important to us it's the final run here that will be uh, of importance and we're going to manage it manually to try and get the best result we can the fact that we're ahead of both williams though so far is promising but not super super great so 131 is what the fastest cars use in their lap we need about 135 plus probably Five to ten seconds of the pit lanes. So One forty-five is the latest we want to leave. Um, probably around a two-minute mark now. We can leave now. Should be okay. Let's gamble a little bit, and we'll send both our cars out. We'll take manual control as long as we can, and this is perfectly okay. We'll take manual control. Perfectly okay. And once we now get to, you know, the run line, if you will. Where Vettel is, there we are, pack, push, boy, and honestly we'll just do the same for Stroll here, tack, push, and deploy, and we'll see if we can maybe qualify higher than we are supposed to, okay, and all the way to zero, all the way but to as you can see yeah, both our cars now have as fresh as they want to run, but sadly we couldn't, uh, we couldn't improve, 16 to 17 though is still pretty decent, uh, I'd say qualifying here, Schumacher, it's where we're supposed to be. And we're still half a second off uh, Ricciardo here in 15th. So Akai is going to need some work. We just barely beat out Williams. But uh, I think we're still okay. Schumacher a bit further back than expected. Drivers, that's... Now in terms of our race day strategy. There has been a change to smoothness. How that works. And generally here, running aggressive is no longer tolerated, if you will, because you burn so much more tire compared to, say, just going one up on pace. So what I'm thinking is we do medium, well, soft, medium, medium, probably would be the better one. Do it like this. And that'll give us a little bit of play with two so we don't run the tires into the ground. According to this, we're going to be three seconds slower. But uh, I think it is, uh, well, worth it to have the variety of play. But we could do Stroll, the other one, and just see who do, does it better. But, uh, yeah, I think I think we can try this. It's perfectly fine. Confidence here, as you can see, is looking good. We do not want to do anything with fuel right now. It's bugged, I've seen, for a lot of people. Like, you can't you use fuel, and it's gone. This is it. 
the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we now, go. Can we maintain our position, or can we even gain? Well, we'll go past Vettel. Uh, but can he maintain now through the first corner? Should be able to. Vettel isn't really challenging him. That's a good teammate. Yeah, um, I feel like the fuel belter here is just... The new version is not as great. The, the last one was good because it told you how much fuel you would have left at the end of the race. And how many more Sounds laps like you could do. But currently... Telling you that you have... Well, we made it past Leclerc because he locked up. But telling you that you have 200 grams of fuel left at the end of the race is telling you how much extra you have. You don't know exactly how much, well, fuel you use a lap. You can check at the beginning. But in general, it's uh, kind of hard to figure out. So, let's have a look here. Uh, I can't actually find it here, but it would probably be in here somewhere how much fuel you use a lap. What I'd like to see rather than this is just like um, in the well let me start again what I'd like to see instead of just how much fuel you have left as a kilogram have it have both of them tell me how much I'm expected to have left at the end of the race both in pure weight but also in terms of how much uh, well how much I'm supposed to you know save because cur the current one I believe tells you that at this point I have 400 grams more than expected I have 500 grams more than expected that I need to get to the end of the race. And uh, that is good. But on some tracks, that don't really work. What I'd like to see here is something like the lap history here. Have an extra one where it just says average fuel usage, for instance. So that you can t test how much fuel does attack use, how much fuel does push use, how much fuel do you save with conserve, that sort of thing. That's a uh, it, would be, it would be nice to see something like that, in all honest honesty. Hamilton is also apparently locked up, I guess. Um, a bit worrying, all things considered. But uh, currently we're just looking well. We, The only goal we have currently is getting ahead of Williams, which isn't good because we need 8th, which means we need to beat out, uh, well, the currently 8th ranked team. And that is going to be a bit more challenging than, uh, well, at least now in the beginning. A new race position for Haas? Lonzo has actually gotten kind of left behind too, so a lot of accidents so far. And Stroll here has gotten a move done on Schumacher. So, uh, we're looking good where we are. Vettel is still clinging on to uh, Leclerc, I think, just barely, so we're good. In terms of pitting, you see our tire life is bit longer than expected for both of our drivers which is good but uh, also a bit concerning a lot of people have already pitted onto Haas Leclerc so actually halved his tires somehow but he's still running them at 25 percent same for Perez there that's uh, a worry uh, I'm thinking we get Vettel in here that should be okay we could probably you know Ran him a little bit more aggressive on those tires. Okay, box, box. And box, we're going to stretch stroll for an extra extra lap here, basically. I think there's been a lockup. Came out in 18th, so we actually harmed ourselves by uh, waiting longer to pit. And stroll in 19th, 17th. We, we put ourselves in a bad position by doing so. Now the question is, will these hard runners run on that to the end? Alpine just advanced. Hmm. Now for Vettel here, we can probably run aggressive and stroll, probably not. But we have the fuel to play, but we could probably also tune up the fuel to push. That's Williams and Schumacher. That's a bit worrisome. Albon with the penalty, safety car. Um, we could probably pit, but again, we have no need of doing so right now. No DRS. And uh, we're just going to allow the collision. yield to bunch up here. Albon is out, Schumacher and Alonso both pitting. So there's a three-man uh, dance. Now we see the Williams here. Oh no! 
Oh, and there's the crack. I'd say that was under Haas. Like, the Williams were up alongside and the Haas just turned in. Then again, if the Williams didn't turn in time, uh, which probably was actually what happened there, then I'd say it was under Williams. Safety car will be in this lap. Safety car will be in this lap. Go aggressive here. I'm tempted to yep. okay. also give him overtake. We can do the same for Stroll here. We'll see if they can make some moves here with their uh, mediums, but uh, a lot of the other people around here also have mediums, and of course we have Hamilton in front of us, which is going to make the uh, the overtake a bit more challenging. So let's tune down to neutral and just get through this uh, this race, really. I think we've had a car. Stroll is locked up. Pull back to grid. Not much we can do about that. That will be the hope, if you will. Okay, it took me five attempts there to speed things up again. But yeah, fuel wise we're looking good now. Um, we have five kilograms extra for both our cars, so we need to burn it off. We're running heavier than we need to. Seems to have been a lockup. Metal is going up and down like a yo-yo. Now, the big question is here, the hard runners will have to pit again, as you can see. And what I assume they are going to are the softs. Uh, if we check our lap history here, in terms of uh, battle. While he was on... Um, let's see. Timings. 141, 42 doing better times now but I assume that is mostly because we have uh, lightened the car less fuel what we could do if we are cheeky is try and pit early uh, but yeah we're gonna pit and we're gonna go back to standard after we pitted Pass with an overtake there. The box box. And then we'll have to see what we do with stroll because I think we will still be safe in uh, just making him wait, but the DRS train is the concern here for for us too, in terms of trying to get ahead of the rest of the pack. Running push is really all we can because the ties will not survive to the end if we uh, if we run aggressive. Now stroll, we should probably allow, give the order to let us see made by. Simply because he. Uh, actually managed to damage his chassis. But yeah, so it doesn't hold our battle. Now, fuel-wise, I should probably have been a bit more aggressive. I'm not, uh, we're not a front-running team anymore, so uh, I don't need to worry too much about fuel at this stage. Because we'll always be behind other cars. Box. But uh, I have to see what battle does here, because again, it's just Magnus and really, that we, I think we can jump if we're lucky. Uh... Yeah, Sounds so like up. we might get top 15 here, potentially, but it's going to be a win. one. Magnuson currently pitting. We got Magnuson. We did not get Tsunoda. Well, Tsunoda got us. So we'll have to see here if we can maintain to the end. 12 laps to go. We might be able to run aggressive for the last couple of laps here. But for now, we're going to be a bit more passive. Looks we have like the Alpha Show and the Alpha Towery ahead Alpha of us, Romeo. which... Uh, as you can see, Battle is kind of struggling to keep up with. Looks like there's been a lockup. Mm, Alonso pitted and brought down to 16. Bit of a late pit stop, but a lot of these... Soft runners are going to have ties that suffer right now, so Battle could potentially make a move if we tune up his uh, pace towards the end. Potentially. But we will have to have to see, really. Now, he's actually slightly below the expectation, I believe, which sucks, but he did get ahead there. Last lap, Verstappen in the lead. Vettel up to 12th. 
This is actually going to be better than expected. So what we could do here is give him defend. But I think, there's been a lock up. I think we're going to give it to him here. And we're going to see if he can use that little bit of extra power to hold them behind. Because as you can see, their tires are dying. And if we'd known that, we might have made played a little bit more aggressively. Because we're seven seconds behind uh, points here, really. So still a good race, considering it's a starter one. Over the finish line. We get uh, Battle in 12th at the first race. That's pretty pretty good. A bit higher than we expected. Now Red Bull and Ferrari do every second row. Ricciardo in 6th for McLaren is kind of a surprise really. Bottas 7th for Alfa Romeo. Hamilton 8th. Um, that's, that's a bit discouraging for Mercedes. Let's just put it like that. And in terms of driver championship, as you can see, it is as it is. Constructors, Red Bull has a little bit of advantage over Ferrari. Mercedes is kind of far behind. McLaren in fourth is something I wouldn't expect. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting season, I guess, if this is how it continues. Let's see. As you can see, neither Stroll nor Battle have the best uh, growth potential. And neither does Hauger, sadly, because I believe Behrman had uh, a better one in our save. But uh, it's still not completely bad it's still okay but uh, having a higher one would benefit but yeah uh we'll have to see how the stats distribution goes for with battle and stroll have some money we make the we're expected to make 3.8 million and with that we can uh, continue here so the uh the board is very happy with our 12th which uh shouldn't be that surprising i believe don't know where we are right now we are currently 8 with that uh, 12 position finish. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how we do. We have another race weekend in four days in Saudi Arabia. We're not going to get any upgrades done, so we're just going to go. And yeah, we do have an, one upgrade, actually. We started the game with, as most most teams do, a suspension upgrade here. But I don't feel like making spending money to put it on the car because it's super, super minor. As you can see, it doesn't really do too much of anything. 0.02% in cornering. Dodia cornering. And 0.01 kph. Again, it does something, but it doesn't do enough to warrant making more than we already have. I'll do that later. Now, we are going to go to Jeddah. And we're going to see how it goes, uh, goes here. I think we're going to go back to just showing the races. And if you find them interesting, you can watch them. Uh, the races part of the season will be in six parts, with preseason ad included as an added. And uh, we'll do the same second split parts. We'll maybe do something different in the future. We'll have to see, because I have been getting requests for shorter videos. But uh, yeah, I'll have to consider how I do this. But for now, we'll try and get through one season here today. We're ready for Jeddah? No, sorry, not Jeddah. Saudi Arabia. Is it Jeddah? Am I being confused here? No, right now, probably. Uh, we're doing a one-stopper, hard to mediums, and uh, we're going to do that for both our drivers. We're not going to do anything particularly special. Qualify 17th and 18th, which is basically what's expected of us. And uh, it's almost time for the rough. Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, and it's lights out, and away we go. So again, we are not expecting anything special through this first season which means most of these races aren't going to have a lot of uh, a lot of things going on if you will and as you can see we've already been kind of left behind here so what we could do okay never mind <laughs> we already have a safety car uh, uh, Alonso is out he's had a bad start to the season really did anyone else be involved? There's been a crash. Sounds like a single car. We can take a look now. Now watch this. Here's Alonso's car. Okay, that's a pretty, that's a pretty rough head. As it's considered. Honestly, this is okay for us because it gives me the opportunity to tune the fuel to push. Yeah. And that will allow us to uh, hopefully keep up with the houses in front of us. 
Doesn't really seem to be working though, so might have to go full, full on deploy here. And I'm thinking we do so. We do so for Grawl as well. He's lost out to Latifi. And we'll see if we manage to DRS will be active. latch on here is probably the right word. To the DRS of the Hasses for, well, for Vettel. Grawl is struggling still with the Williams, so we're going to put him in neutral. We're just going to have him, uh, well, stay there. Now, Vettel is already, again, being kind of left behind here. So, might have to just give it a little bit of the deploy touch. And could probably, well, isn't really due to the Kaiser front having Looks better like tires. Just gained a race position. But, uh, how much we really can do about yeah. that. Going to have to charge ERS, which probably will make it mean that we're behind again by a little bit too much so put it neutral hope that we can keep in the rs and, a new position. and just looks like Williams. we just barely it doesn't look like we'll be able to hang on does it so i think we're just gonna allow him to uh allow them to go they just have that much more pace than us especially with the us trying to stretch these hearts even if we're running well fuel burn so uh Leave things as is. Hopefully Ricciardo can catch up to us and pull us along here. And hopefully Stroll too gets propelled a little bit forwards because we're losing a lot of time to the rest of the field here. If we check the last lap, we are 1.6 seconds slower. That's 1.2 seconds slower. And generally we are and suffering a lot and it's going to be a while Williams. before we get our first upgrade. We're up in 13th, but that's mainly due to cars behind us uh, making pit stops. Norris and Schumacher both has, and we will pretty soon. We are stretching these uh, hards quite, uh, McLaren, gain a quite the distance, really. Let's go back to balance for uh, Vettel, so he doesn't run out of fuel. And he has already been overtaken by both Norris and uh, Schumacher. Pass with an overtake. Which isn't that surprising, we're just lacking pace. Oh, red flag the race. Let's take a closer look. Now, just watch the Mercedes here. I can understand the red flag. He's basically blocking a lot of the track. The team are devastated. Question is, is this good for us or bad for us? Because, um... We need to switch tires, and the mediums will not last to the end. We could go medium soft, or soft medium even, if I make it places. Um, let's split it. For battle, we'll try and go soft medium. I think. And for stroll, we'll try and go medium and just stretch them. Honestly, that's probably what we should have done for both of them, all things considered. But uh, sadly, it's too late to change my mind. The restart is moments away as the race continues. And it's lights out, and away we go. Let's see here. If we go aggressive, because these will not last a lot, but we want to try and make it places. Uh, Stroll can make this medium set work to the end. Okay. Let's go light then, and try and make it up with fuel usage. Or we can stick standard and then go uh, slower towards the end. Battle has already made up a place. Can he make up more? And most of these are not going to pit again. They're going to do the same thing that we planned with the medium one stop. So uh, I screwed over Battle here, honestly. And even if I wanted to, I can't go on a strategy that would make these uh, ties really last. Yeah, this was a tactical blunder for me. I should just put Vettel on the mediums and try and stretch them. That would that was the right uh, call. Hmm. 
And if I'd made it, Vettel would actually have a very, very good race here. But I did not, so now we're in trouble. <laughs> uh, we're going to get Vettel onto a new pair of mediums. Tune him down to standard. And that puts him at the, uh, the back of the pack, sadly. Now, Stroll does seem like he can make these last, and again, he has a lot of fuel. But uh, he's struggling with the Williams right now, and honestly, Battle has caught up to the others and can probably make some moves here if we uh, play our cars right. He already has. And should be able to at least get 15th. Now, if we do this, we've been in the 15th on both the races, which means that we lost out on a lot of money. But I didn't expect us to be here, but I probably should have been kind of hoping for it, to be fair. But yeah, it's been on the backs of DNFs. So I don't know if I, I should be, you know, expecting that. Uh, three laps to go. I kind of want to try and get Stroll ahead of uh, Latifi. We're going to give him overtake. And he did. Go neutral. And hopefully, he will be able to maintain. Battle Lad actually left them in the dust behind them, so. That's just how much quicker he is on those fresh mediums. So maybe he could have made something out of it, but. Just a bit too late in the uh, in the race here, really. Could also go and attack with him, of course, to try and help him out there. Stroll did manage to get the Williams at the end, which is good. And that's what we like to see. In terms of uh, the results here, Ferrari 1-2, Rebel 3-4, and Alfa Romeo 5-6. Mercedes continue their bad form here with Savant going to Russell. Alfa Tauri and Alpine finish out the points. And with that, the Drivers' Championship has uh, a few moves here. Leclerc going up to the top, one point between the top three. Ferris fourth, and uh, well, Guan Yu Show moving up quite a, quite a lot of movement here, all things considered. Constructors, Ferrari up to first, Alfa Romeo up to third. That's something I haven't seen before. Mercedes down to fourth, McLaren up to fifth, and Haas here moving up, pushing us down. So, we're going to struggle here probably to get eighth this season, but um, we'll have to see. The second half is when we might start making moves. Personal development, again, Hauge is really the only one we care about here. Battle getting points is great, but not something we expect with his low uh, low growth expectations here. 3.8 million for sponsors is, again, in line with uh, expectations, and it's what we're going to be getting for the foreseeable future. Uh, the, the, uh, the board is not happy with that race, so uh, we might get in trouble here. They're, jet, they're, satisfied, they're satisfied, but not happy. So... Uh, Again, could be in trouble, could not be not. We don't know yet. Board confidence check-in. Good result in the board review. Financial report. Again, I think we're too concerned about money. The projected balance is, you know, going through the roof. So we'll be spending a lot on parts. Car development report. We haven't actually done any development yet. So this one is moot. Well, we could see how the other teams are doing. Suspension, we don't care about. But the chassis, we kind of want to have an extra of because both cars use it. Suspension is a one-off. If it gets destroyed, I'll just put him back on the old one, really. So uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, let's have a quick look at race preview Australia. Performance targets. We're not going to do any of these, honestly, because uh, we didn't qualify 15th or high last time. What is this? Is this bugged? Okay, that's a bit concerning. Um, but yeah, we're gonna continue and go to Australia. Ready for the third race of the season? Australian Grand Prix. We uh, messed up uh, Battle's qualifying, so we'll start 20th, sadly. But uh, sometimes it happens, not much we can do about it. We're gonna do a two-stopper. Mainly because I feel like the window given during a one-stop here is a little bit too risky. And this shouldn't be that much slower. It should actually be faster, as you can see, due to having more tire to play with. 
We could also go aggressive at the end of these stints if we feel like them. It, which is what I'm thinking, we'll just do it as the plan is here. Go aggressive once the pit window opens and uh, get the most we can out of our ties and then pit and do the same at the end of the hard. And we'll be trying to carry out this strategy. We'll be running standard everything. We could run overtake, but our car isn't good enough to fight for points. So we're just going to take it slow. For the Australian Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Good qualifying as you can see from both Red Bull and uh, Ferrari, as well as Bottas here up in fifth, which is what we usually and see in the other games. From Williams. The... Uh, so the RS is enabled now. You know, the um, Alfa Romeo doing well. But uh, what we are going to be seeing here is probably a little bit of potential problems here because our fuel is slowly going up. So front run runners are going to suffer, which is both Red Bulls and Ferrari. They actually have a sizable gap here down to fifth, which is Alonso. And yeah. We'll try and see if we can get our boys to beat Williams, which will like be the goal. Martin have just gained a race position. But uh, what we really want to beat here is the seventh team. Sorry, the eighth team. So for now, we have actually overtaken Sonoda, but it's going to rely a lot on us being able to uh, get our upgrades out and running. And that'll be a great help for us. Fuel wise, we're looking good. Uh, running standard is probably what we're going to have to do just based on fuel here. 13 laps in. Great play there. They've moved up a place. Roll over to Schumacher and instantly goes down to 17th again. Is that a it new happens. Race position, I think we try and make Vettel move up a bit here because he's been stuck behind the Williams the entire race so far. And get him to make some moves. Yellow in sector one. Luckily, not anything we are involved in, I believe. And with these pit stops now happening. Track? I'm thinking, thinking we do go aggressive here. We push these tires. We go attack just straight out because we have two laps now before we pit. Go attack. We'll use a little bit of extra fuel on that. But hopefully that'll allow us to, you know, save a little bit of time potentially, but we're stuck behind That's others. So we don't have too much of a choice on where we end up afterwards. Thinking we pit Vettel this lap for his hard set. And then we do the same for Stroll next lap. Box, box. That should be okay. And we're going to go ahead here and give him the... Under more options. There we are. Delay the pit stop by one... Uh, by one lap. We'll have to see it now. If Vettel comes out ahead of Latifi, he does. So he even had three seconds on him. So we've technically gained. And Stroll came out ahead of Vettel as well. So bonus. But I did now run Vettel on attack for a little bit longer than I should have. So we'll tune both of them down. Battle will actually harvest a little bit because he's running dangerously low at times on his ERS. We'll have him just get back to about the 40% mark. That should be okay. Now we have another wave of pit stops here and we're ahead of the... Uh, we're ahead of both the Williams cars, which is kind of what we were hoping for. And Battle has actually left Stroll behind. Now, I could slow Vettel down, but I don't think there's too much of a point in that. I could also have Roll try and push, see if he can catch up. Could also be an interesting thing to do, see how much the fuel affects lap time. Uh, seems to be decent, but again, he isn't losing fuel that much. Well, a lot of it. But the one stat that I, again, would really, really like to see here is... Well... Not the fuel load. For starters, I'd like to see average fuel used a lap. That would give you a good, you know, expectation point on when you can push, when you cannot, and for how long you can push, things like that. It's kind of hard to measure at this stage. Um, in terms of pit stops here, I believe... I'm unsure if the house in front of the Schumacher here and Tsunoda, they're going to be able to make that stint last to the end. I kind of doubt it. Lap time wise, we are running similar. Sorry, we're not even close to similar. A second behind them. So we probably will not be able to catch. But uh, again, we haven't had any upgrades. We'll have to look into that once we get a little bit further into the season. I'm around the halfway point. 16, 15, 16 races maybe. So we'll start uh, 
potentially score points. Girl spun, didn't damage his car. I have no problems with that. It happens. And a new position just gained by Williams. Especially since we're not fighting We've for points, so spin. it's not as important. Let's take a look <laughs> it's what I'm getting at. Now let's have a look. It's Lance Stroll. They spun the car. That could have been bad. Like he could have collected that all, but he didn't. So uh, to have been a lock -up. I'm fairly okay with that. Now, fewer wise, we can also have Vettel push a bit more. And we've actually missed our pit window. <laughs> Let's get the uh, stroll in here. Let's get Vettel in here. I got distracted. That's my bad. And I have a big question here. Are they going to be able to make their tires last to the end? Because if so, we might have a little bit of a challenge ahead of us. Fifty on Alban, he might be able to, well, he should be able to pull that for uh, a few more laps. We probably could have done two if we really wanted to. We're running about Vettel a second quicker. Stroll is running the same time, so Vettel is a second quicker. Which is actually concerning. There we go, Stroll is quicker. Stroll is actually... <laughs> Stroll is attached to Alonso, I believe, yeah. So that is why he's running quick. He's having a DRS helping him along. Um, how we're looking in terms of three seconds. But Vettel has to back off Ocon, and Someone then if he can actually hang on to Ocon and Bottas for that matter, until they get to uh, Albon, that might benefit him. But uh, yeah. I think the only reason why that flash like catched up and overtook is because it was able to hang on to the others. There was someone who went off there, I believe. What else, potentially? Is today's winner. But uh, not the worst result we could have had. Of course, we could have a better one, for sure. Red Bull Ferrari is still at the top. Mercedes now getting a proper third. Well, third team-wise per goal here. Alpine fourth, and Alfa Romeo out of the points, sadly. McLaren, Alfa Tauri, the runner-ups, if you will. And we had a... A bad race, really. That's the best way I can describe this one. We should have gone for the one-stopper. In terms of uh, the Drivers' Championship here, Lewis Hamilton moves up. Yeah, gets some more points. Oko moves up. Alonso moves up. And Constructors-wise, let's say this is now back up to third. Alfa Romeo got uh, taken down a peg. Alpine moves up. And uh, yeah, that's really it. Development point for Stroll. Good. And we make uh, what we're used to making. Post race, we, uh, well, braking performance could be improved. Full line stroll. We had a difficult race, post race overview. Chassis has been manufactured, good. We have development points for Hauger, which we'll put into reactions because we need to get those pace stats up. That would be our main focus here, really. Pace stats is key. And, uh,. Regulation vote for minor technical changes here to low speed wing changes or high speed wing changes. So it's just for the wings, really, which actually could benefit us, but it could also be kind of a negative. Uh, let's go for low speed, I guess. It should still work. It's the thing that should actually have the most effect, put it that way. Suspension low stock, we don't care. Again, it's the one that we have one of that we were given for free. Alonso has scouting completed. He has eight months left. He gets paid five million a uh, season. And with this, we could potentially propose a contract with him. So, do we want to switch our stroll for Alonso now? Or do we want to tr try and do it at the end of the season? Honestly, we could do it now. And have a proper, like, old guard run. Performance, uh, in terms of performance, we should probably do a lot better than stroll. So, I'm thinking that we just go full on old guard here. We get Alonso, as I said we would. And we'll see if we can keep this team going. We're going to up his value a little bit. We're going to put him in the second car. And we're going to try three seasons. I don't know how many seasons he would want. Let's go with four. And we're going to give him 600 for just signing with us. Let's see how he feels about this. 
Well, of course, if he starts falling off quite rapidly, we might have to... This is too long, I'm considering retiring. That's, uh... That's a bit worrisome. Let's try three seasons, see how he feels about that. He was happy with everything else except the... Race target bonus. Okay, so race target bonus is something he would need. The problem is that the way that this bonus works right now is actually bugged. So if you give this out, potentially it could... Uh, well, it's a visual bug. I haven't actually seen if it's a actual bug. But it's uh, giving, you, giving you money as a visual one. But I haven't checked if it's an actual factual. That's why I don't want to give it out. Um, let's pay 300,000 extra a year. See how he feels about that. If that's enough to, you know, get him going. If not, we're just going to have to get him for two seasons. And then prolong it from there. He accepted that, so we'll hire him. Replace him for Stroll. So, uh, we now have our old guard up and running, which is great. Let's continue. Research period has opened, as you can see. So, if we really wanted to do, we could research the car. But uh, we do also have a decent amount of money. So, uh, we'll consider how we want to do things. I'm a bit unsure myself. Again, it's the thing that we didn't work for that got passed, which is okay. High speed wing changes. Which means that the high speed takes the biggest hit, medium speed takes the same 20%, and low speed takes 10% as long with the DRS Delta. Expertise drop this would be. Race prep failed me or Magna. We're gonna not go for any targets there. We still have a bit too weak of a car. And again, I'm gonna have to see how the intense works in terms of gaining expertise. If it's lackluster compared to before, we'll probably go turn our heads to research, but... Uh, if it's not, we'll probably be doing a lot of designing just to get more expertise. And we'll probably do something to alleviate the drop that we're getting. But other than that, we might just end up skipping research altogether. Let's go to Emilia Romagna. We're about to start the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. We'll be doing a bit of a split strategy here. As you can see, we'll be trying soft, medium, medium for Alonso. And we'll have Vettel, who starts behind him in 18th, on medium hard, one stopper. In theory, Alonso should be five seconds slower. But we'll have to see if the uh, soft stay actually do have a decent uh, decent effect here. Average lap time isn't that crazy, depending on what compound you run. The softs are slightly more efficient, as you can see here, by less than a tenth to the softs, but almost four tenths to the hards. So the degradation will be an issue, as you can see. But uh, honestly, it could still be... An interesting one to have a look at. We'll try and see if this split in, split in the strategy will work out to our advantage or not. So uh, let's get into it. The main problem will be, of course, if we get stuck by, behind other cars. So I guess doing one stoppers is probably our best strategy for the time the being. Drivers. The crowd are on their feet in anticipation of this. The Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Also already making moves by looks of things. Might even get Schumacher here. Let's just keep doing what you're doing. Not quite, but still a good start. Move uh, got like one Aston move Martin up. Have just gained a race position. It is slightly getting left behind here by the Haas on soft versus hards, which is uh, concerning to see. We'll have to see if Vettel can make some moves too. On those mediums and uh, DRS will be active. Generally, here yeah, we don't expect rain. That's a little bit concerned. Now we don't have the vet center upgraded, so we could be wrong. But uh, we'll have to see here uh, once this DRS train speed is a bit out if Alonso can make some moves or not. Could probably also give him the overtake. That might help. I think someone's run wide. That was a lot of back and forth. <laughs> Aston Martin with a great uh, let's put him on moved up a place. powers for a little while. And there's an overtake and, from Williams. Uh, go neutral again. Yeah, we could probably again climb up, but I don't think we'll get in the points. So even if we get good results here, all that matters is that we're eight by the end of the season. Season. And if we work on our pass, I think we'll get there, no problem. Battle overtakes Alban. He's still fighting with the Williams uh, in the back there, sadly. 
well, one Williams. And, a new position. and they'll Just be basically DRS training each other, like we usually do. Now, Alonso do, do be getting close to that optimal pit stop. If we compare his lap times to, say, uh, Vettel. But the problem is, of course, you need to take into consideration the DRS here. Vettel had 123.3, 123.3. Alonso is still a lot quicker, 122. So I'm thinking we can run a little bit longer before we switch. And potentially here, we make an amendment and say that we go... Okay, I'm not allowed to switch that into two hearts. Say we did something like this. It would cost us race pace by... Well, it would make us 15 seconds slower than what we're currently doing. So we could try that, but again, seems like this is probably the best way of doing things. We're going to have him go attack for at least one lap, maybe two. And see if he can Copy. make some moves here on, uh, on the guys in front. And if not, we'll just pit. I think we will be pitting here. Get him onto the mediums. But it's still a, a pretty good stint, all things considered. We also have some extra life on our next stint here. So what we could do is not go attack as we are currently. But we could go aggressive and try and close down That's the gap. Latifi overtake, might be a problem with that. And basically if we can jump someone in the pits, it will be the goal. But uh, Latifi is on old tires. Alonso's on new ones. He should get him here on the straight. And he does. Now Vettel is actually the next one up. He's still with Albon. And we're going to have him to go a little bit aggressive here towards the end of his stint. That sounds like someone's gone wide there. But generally, it seems like going aggressive isn't actually a good thing anymore. Because of the fact that you lose so much extra tire life. And thus, time. So the time you gain by running aggressive, you lose later on in your stint. So aggressive is very circumstantial now. I guess you only really want to run it if you're trying to jump someone in the pits. And then you put it back down to standard. And standard is actually what you'll be running most of the time. In the, at least 1.8. There's some other people needing to pit. It's only Vettel. And yeah, that's basically it right now. We are going to get Vettel on to those hards. I believe it's uh, time. Well, it was time for a while here. Yeah. I just mit missed the gap again. But uh, in front of us, there's no one who's really going to pit. Running aggressive here is probably still okay. We're going to do so. We don't lose as much uh, well, compared to what we were expecting. I think we can do it fairly fairly alright here. We're still stuck behind Norris though. We'll have to see if he can make a move. But we are getting also, as you can see, that left behind. So DRS is the only reason why we're even keeping up with Norris. We're going to use these tires on aggressive, and then we're going to tune down to standard, I think. Again, we still haven't actually gotten a single upgrade on our car this season. Let's get in pit stop here on the next one. And we'll tune it down around here, I think, so I don't forget. Now, Vettel is just going to run these hards normally, and we'll have to see if he can make up, uh, make up places here. Because Albon has pitted, Latifi hasn't, or he has had some sort of weird accident. Picciardo will probably have to pit. And in terms of interval, we are not close enough that we'll be able to jump him in the pits. Well, when he pits. So we're probably going to have a pretty lackluster oh, race here. All things considered. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't get him in the pits. He had uh, a good margin here of seven eight seconds. We almost got Schumacher though, but uh, we're just lacking that little bit of extra pace to get these guys. And Schumacher's on the softs anyway, so I think he would have gotten us. Good tune up, fuel a little bit though. We have a little bit to go on. And as you can see, even even now the. Ferraris are lapping up to ninth. They're probably going to lap a few more actors, if you if you will. Looks 
like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Well, that's got an Albon. That is good. Looks it's not like risking anything with uh, Alonso. We still have plenty to go on. Don't get me wrong. This is plenty. But um, if there's not going to gain by risking anything, I don't feel like we should do so. We could, of course, push these tires to have to limit and try and catch up to Schumacher, who's a little bit in front of us. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go all in here. See if we can get the house. And how are we doing in lap times compared to him? We are gaining, don't get me wrong. But we've used all our ERS now and we're gonna we're gonna suffer for this, I think. Yeah, even running attack, as you can see, we aren't really gaining on Schumacher. It's a tenth maybe. We're even losing a tenth now, so Yeah. The hats is just too big good for us. We're still 17, 18, that is where we expect to finish, That's so uh is today's winner. It's still a good race, don't get me wrong. It's what we expected. Ferrari 1-2, Red Bull 3-4, Mercedes 5-6. This is more in line with expectations with Bottas 7. Alfa Tauri, McLaren and Alfa Romeo scoring points. Kind of what you expect to see. Driver Championship, uh, no real changes here. Down the table we have Lewis moving up, Gasly moving up, and a lot of people moving down due to other people moving up. Constructors, no changes, and uh, Ferrari is starting to have a grip on this one. Mercedes is far behind both of them, so uh, we'll have to see how this uh, develops. Development-wise, as you can see, our drivers have basically reached their peaks. They're not going to get much better. Hauge is basically going to be the only one we focus on. Money, basic payout, which is what we, uh, what we are happy with at this point. And let's have a quick look here. We have the front wing done in a few days. So let's get on. Uh, let's get on with this. Before we get on with this, though, um, we're actually done with this part. Part one out of six for season one, in terms with races included for Aston Martin. Currently, we don't see a lot of changes to the design system. Uh, we only assigned two parts so far, but it seems to be a rather weak nerf, if there's even a nerf. I didn't. Well, I haven't paid too much attention to the current Williams save, but it doesn't seem to be that harsh of a nerf. Most of the changes are probably due to AI, and they're, you know, actually investing on their cars. So we'll see if they're more stable than they were in our Williams game, because as the game progressed, a lot of teams were moving up and down. The most stable one was probably our team now, Aston Martin. So we'll see how the old Guardian does in probably, well, the next season and the second half of the season. But thank you very much for watching this first part. If you have enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Again, this first season is going to be a lot of us just being bag markers. Me not putting it in super <laughs> too much effort, if you will, into the races simply due to the fact them being very hard to win. And I don't want to use a lot of time and effort when we can gain a lot more during the second season. And also, I do have sadly real life obligations that limit my playtime severely. Work has been hell lately so uh i'll try and get the at least one video out a day maybe two but uh we'll see what we can do again if you have enjoyed this please like and subscribe if you already have done so thank you very much and i hope to see you uh, next time Bye bye